Pokemon is obviously about catching them all, but there are also some Pokemon in the games that you can't catch as well. And in this video, I'm going to be highlighting 10 of them. Here are 10 Pokemon that you can't catch in the games. First, we're going to start off with a new one, and that is Relor and Rabska's pre-evolution. In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, we got these two new bug Pokemon that are a two-stage evolutionary family, with Relor being the first stage and Rabska the second stage. However, there is actually a canonical, yet still unofficial, baby version of these Pokemon that exists within the games that you can even see for yourself. In Rabska's Violet Dex entry, it mentions how there is an infant within its psychic ball of dung, and if you can catch Rabska at the right camera angle, or just look at its Pokedex art, you can actually see the infant for yourself. It's been given its own unique body shape and design, and is described as an infant, so we can pretty much say with certainty that this is, in effect, a Relor pre-evolution that starts its life being cared for within this ball by Rabska, until it presumably evolves into Relor and can survive on its own. This is not an official Pokemon, meaning it does not have a name, and as the topic of this video suggests, you can't catch it on its own, but it is canonical because it's literally in the games, and personally, I think that kind of stuff is really cool. Next, let's talk about a classic Pokemon in this category, Shelder's Evolution. And no, I don't mean Cloyster. Shelter has had an unofficial evolution ever since the very beginning that appears when it helps Slowpoke evolve into Slowbro. Ironically, Shelter is really the only one who changes appearance here, despite it being Slowpoke's evolution, meaning that this Shelter evolution is truly more of a new Pokemon than Slowbro is. It even was going to become its own Pokemon in Gold and Silver, which we found out about thanks to leaks, but it was unfortunately cut from the games, and to this day has not been recognized as an official Pokemon of its own, and therefore, you can't catch it. Even though it's as distinctive as can be, and has been staring us all right in the face this entire time. In fact, this Pokemon is so official, despite being unofficial, that it even has its own regional variant. When Galarian Slowbro evolves into Galarian Slow King, this Shelder evolution gets a decidedly different appearance as well, truly making it a regional variant of its own, even if it's not officially recognized. This can even be said for the form it takes with Galarian Slowbro as well. It isn't really that different at all, only really gaining a purple nozzle that Slowbro shoots poison out of, but that's about as much of a form difference as Slowbro has here, so you can't really knock it either. The true regional variant here is still the Slowking form though, because that is truly a more distinctive difference to its original form than even some actual regional variants are, but sadly, it's not an actual Pokemon that you can catch by itself. Another one from the original days of Kanto that is iconic in this category is Baby Kangaskhan. Baby Kangaskhan existed even before actual baby Pokemon existed, but it has never been acknowledged or upgraded as a proper Pokemon of its own. It did finally get the chance to jump out of its mother's pouch when Kangaskhan got a Mega Evolution, but even that wasn't enough to detach it from Kangaskhan as its own Pokemon, even though it clearly is. As much as I get that having the baby is Kangaskhan's thing, I think the baby could definitely exist as its own Pokemon too, and there are a lot of possibilities of what you could do with it given its unique situation. However, for the time being, it remains an elusive Pokemon that we unfortunately can't catch. This next one is especially painful because we literally were supposed to be able to catch it, but then Game Freak was just like, 
Nah. The Eternal Flower Floette, whose story I'm sure you're already aware of by now, was not just going to be a special Pokemon that AZ had in X and Y, it was actually going to be obtainable, presumably through a special event, as not only was there data for it in the games, but additionally, it also had its own signature move, Light of Ruin, unique stats compared to other Floette, and it even received its own Dex entries in the Alola game. However, due to the absolute mutilation of the Kalos games and how so much of them was just scrapped and never used due to Pokemon Z being a thing and then being cancelled, we never got to obtain this Floette for ourselves like we were intended to be able to. And unless they decide to finally make it obtainable in 2035 when X and Y remakes come out, I think this one is unfortunately going to be lost to time forever. Next up, we've actually got two to discuss, and that would be the Imagined Paradox Pokemon. Within the Scarlet and Violet books in Scarlet and Violet are drawings of two Paradox Pokemon that resemble fusions of the Legendary Beasts from Johto and the Swords of Justice from Unova. While Scarlet and Violet aren't finished at this point and there's still DLC that is yet to be released, so anything could happen, to this point, at the time of this video's upload, we have not seen these Pokemon make an actual appearance outside of these drawings. We have seen Walking Wake and Iron Leaves make an appearance, but they are much different than these fusion paradoxes that the games were very much teasing. And while you can make the argument that these are imagined Pokemon as the books say, and therefore were possibly never meant to be real, they are definitely being used as a tease for the DLC, and at the very least, were meant to tease the appearance of Walking Wake and Iron Leaves. So, since they were so heavily foreshadowing what is to come for these games, and they have completely original designs that directly appear in the games themselves, these definitely fall into that category of elusive, would-be Pokemon that you're not able to catch. Now we're going to move into an interesting subcategory, because it's a category that concerns Pokemon statues. Given that the Pokemon world is the world of Pokemon, any animalistic imagery depicted in paintings, drawings, statues, etc. naturally has to be considered to be depicting a Pokemon of some kind. And on that note, there are some Pokemon statues that appear in the games that are of particular interest because they don't depict a Pokemon that is known to us to this point. For example, there are these statues that appear in the gyms in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl that depict a creature that almost looks like a gargoyle. It has a small yet beastly shaped body, and very distinctly has wings that sprout out from its back. This clearly does not resemble any Pokemon we have ever seen to this point, and while you can easily say that this is just meant to be ambiguous and the developers clearly didn't mean anything by it, that's not really what I'm getting at. I mean, for one, if you do want to take the developer angle, even if it's not meant to be depicting an actual Pokemon, they definitely did go out of their way to make it look distinctive enough to be one. And like I said, as far as the in-universe lore is concerned, this thing is in the Pokemon world, so it must depict a Pokemon of some kind. In fact, we have seen multiple iterations of this gym statue Pokemon, as we also see one in Pokemon Origins that looks more cat-like, but has the same distinctive wings as the ones from the games. What exactly are these creatures, and what gave them the prestige to be able to be honored with a statue inside of a Pokemon gym? This is clearly not a Pokemon we can catch at the moment, but it would be pretty cool to use it as a concept for a future Pokemon that we could catch, because it definitely has the potential to be something really cool. The other statue Pokemon I have to discuss today, funnily enough, also comes out of the Sinnoh games, as it concerns the infamous statue in Eterna City. 
This statue is noteworthy for not only depicting the box art legendaries of the games, but depicting both of them at the same time in one Pokemon. Yes, this statue depicts a fused version of Dialga and Palkia, in kind of the same way that the fused beasts and Swords of Justice are depicted that I talked about earlier. Now, this one isn't a case of a Pokemon that was meant to actually exist, because it was basically just meant to resemble both legendaries so that it resembled the legendary of your game no matter which game you were playing. However, at the same time, you can't just stick stuff like this in front of Pokemon fans and not expect their minds to wonder, especially when it actually appears in-game and is an official depiction of what a Dialga and Palkia fusion could be like. That definitely would have been a cool route to explore for sure, but sadly, the games didn't, and so we are only left to wonder what this majestic and powerful Pokémon could have been like in the flesh. Speaking of fleshy Pokémon though, the next one is just that. However, it's a bit of an exception compared to the others in this video, as even though it still qualifies as something you can't catch in the games, it doesn't actually appear in the games to begin with, and instead appears in the anime. However, it's still a very interesting case because it's literally a full-on Pokemon of its own, so it's definitely worth a mention. In the anime episode, Rise and Shine Starship from the Sun and Moon arc, we get to see what a pre-evolution of Celestela looks like, complete with its own unique design and everything. Now, this isn't considered an official Pokemon once again, hence why it doesn't appear in the games and why you can't catch it, but they didn't exactly just use a miniature Celestela in this episode like they easily could have either. They literally went and made this baby Celestela a whole new Pokemon of its own, complete with its very own design that is distinctly original when compared to Celestela. Stila itself. As much of a bummer as it is that it's not official though, and that you can't obtain it in-game, finding stuff like this within the cracks and crevices of the franchise is part of what makes Pokemon so cool in my opinion, and that is why I wanted to share some of it with you today. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, and let me know which of these you would like to see become an official Pokemon the most. With that said, I'll be back very soon with another video, and until then, as always, thanks so much for watching this one, I really appreciate it, and I will smell you guys later.